can you charge a lithium battery with a lead acid charger? The first thing we're going to talk about is the three different types of batteries just to level set. We have the old school flooded lead acid battery that everybody's seen. It's probably in your car right now. Uh, absorbent glass mat battery or an AGN. And then the last one there is the lithium battery. For simplicity's sake, we're going to combine the lead acid and the AGM together. Since their charging profiles are pretty similar and really if you have something that charges the lead acid, you can go to an AGM. There's no real concern there. We're going to start with looking at the charge profile for the lead acid battery. Uh, you can see that it's broken out into three primary charge stages. The first one being the bulk section. Then we have the absorption or where it's really kind of taken in at a steady state. And then we have the float charging, which is getting it all the way up to 100% kind of slow. And that's your float charging. And that's shown there on the screen as a 13.2 volt float charge. That'll come to play here in just a minute. Now we bring in the lithium charge profile. You can see it's much shorter in duration. Uh, that's just by design of the lithium battery it can take a lot more current faster. And that's what's shown in the chart. So we're able to take that bulk and really throw the current voltage to it. We're running around 14.4, 14.6 volts, depending on the charger. And that's what the profile looks like for a lithium battery. Now, something that you may have read so far is if you use that lead acid charger, you may not get the full capacity or full charge on your lithium battery. Let me graphically show you why that's the case. What we have here is a line chart with the y-axis is voltage and on the bottom is state of charge with 100% starting on the left. So as we go to the right, it's depleting and going down in voltage and state of charge. When we're looking at it, this starts at 12.67 volts for a fully charged lead acid battery and it goes down to about 11 and a half volts. All right, now we have the lithium profile shown here on the top line. It starts at a much higher voltage at 13.6 for an LFP battery, so about a full volt higher than a lead acid battery at 100% state of charge. And you can see how that's trending down, more so down to 20 to 0%. It has a very steep drop off going down to zero where that battery will shut itself off. Now what I'm going to bring in is a line here and that is going to show you where that float charging period is on a lead acid charger. Remember that's that last stage and that's where that, that lead acid battery gets up to 100% at 13.2 volts. Now when you line that up against the lithium profile you can kind of see where they cross, right? That's really where you're going to end up using a lead acid charger on the lithium battery and that's going to get you to 70 maybe 80% state of charge on that lithium battery. That's where you're losing it. And I'm not the only one to say that, so if you take a look at this, this is the Dakota Lithium site where they specifically reference using this and why you should not use a lead acid charger. To summarize this up, looking at charge voltage, much higher voltage for the lithium and lower with the lead acid. When we look at charge time, you're able to really throw that current to the lithium battery. And so the charge time is much lower on a lithium battery and then the charge current is much higher, right? To get that time down, we gotta jack up the current, and that's how we get higher current going into the lithium battery. Speaking of higher things, I can always use a few more subscribers, so if you're finding this helpful, please hit like and subscribe down below. So now that maybe you found out that your lead acid charger won't work for you, what type of chargers should you consider? I have this broken out between a single battery setup and a multi-battery setup. Uh, what I use right now is the Wise charger shown on the left here, and another option is the NOCO shown on the right. Some of the details behind these is that WISE charger is about 70 bucks for it, and it is a 20 amp charger, which is pretty high for a regular single bank charger. It is not weather resistant at all, maybe something I should have considered a little bit more, but I didn't. And since it is wide open, you need to be uh, not mounted in the boat, and you should not leave it out in the rain to charge, something to consider there. And it is also a lithium only charger. You do not want to use it on your lead acid, your AGM or anything else that you may find that needs recharging. It is a one trick pony for an LFP battery only. And now the next one on the right is the NOCO Genius 10 and it is a 10 amp charger so half the charge rate of the Wise and about $100 for this particular one. It is all weather so you can mount it uh, inside the boat if you wanted to but it is intended to kind of be an off board bring it to the battery uh, but I would say that you can mount it if you got creative. It also has functionality to support charging a lead acid, an AGM, or a lithium battery. So it might be nice to have around to charge a car up if you needed a trickle charger to your lawnmower, whatever it may be. You have some versatility with a charger like this for a single battery setup. Next up is going to be the multi-battery charger. So you got three, four, five batteries that you need charged. And this is what you would want to take a look at. One on the left there is the NOCO Genius 10x4. It is a four bank 10 amp charger, around $425 for that one. And it will also support all types of batteries. On the right we have is the Minn Kota Precision Charger, also a 10x4, and it's around $530 for it. 
Again, this is not going to be a comparison of chargers, but something to consider if you're going for a multi-battery setup. Most battery companies have some sort of charger that they push. You may have a super special trolling motor battery that's like a 36 volt, uh, and then you maybe have a marine electronics battery that's 16 volts, and you have all of these different voltages. Take a look at your particular lithium battery company and see if they have a solution that really streamlines those different voltages for you to make it a lot easier. That said, if you're considering buying a lithium battery, check out this video right here for a comparison on some of the latest companies.